Fellas, here we are. We're back downstairs at DK's house. Um, I pulled a couple promos today just for the background because I'm not going to be in front of the camera today. I ain't feeling it. So, today is Monday hmm, the 20th. And I wanted to put these two promos up here. Uh, this one because I'll be doing a display with this one. I don't think I have any examples around here of what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to go on a, a mat with um, three cutouts below it for Topps cards. But the thing that sucks right now about Connor's Topps base cards is that they're all like at least five bucks, so I'm not digging that. But uh, I have two of them actually. Uh, yeah, I got two of them right here, but I just moved a stack of stuff over the top of my box of base, so just one sec. So... Hope everybody had a good weekend. I have these two. So I got these two now. And uh, probably going to look to pick up not the 13 Bloodlines debut. Because that one's like 10 bucks. But maybe I can get my hands on the Bloodlines insert. Where it kind of has like his bio and stuff. So Connor uh, is kind of escalating up as one of my favorite personalities. Slash success stories I guess you could say. I think he's inspiring and motivational. Um, so yeah, that's all pre-tats, obviously. No uh, silverback tattoo and no tiger tattoo. Now, Demetrius Johnson today on, on the MMA Hour on MMA Fighting with Ariel Hawani. Man, Air, he had just a fantastic interview. Um, and really, I don't want to say won me over as a fan, but made me like him a lot more personally. And I will enjoy watching him fight more. And I think I figured out why his fanfare is low. Uh, one, and maybe it's because the little person complex. You know, people don't like the little scrappers because it doesn't seem like they have big power shots and and things like that. And they they're not really finishing. Well, I mean, they finish fights. I mean, he what finished a fight in the last second of the fifth round, uh, his last fight, and then um, you know he's knocked out Benavidez and stuff. So I mean. He just doesn't get the, the fanfare. Well, he kind of showed his hand today on maybe why that... He didn't say why that was, but I think it was kind of revealed in the interview why it was. And it's because he was giving cookie-cut answers for everything, and they didn't specifically say that today on the show. But um, uh, he was, like, swearing and showing more of his personality. And not that swearing is good. I don't tend to swear unless I get really ticked off. And then I, you know, I repent after that. <laughs> but like he was just being himself, and he wasn't just giving these PC championship, you know, answers. And he actually was kind of calling out how other people, you know, are doing drugs and failing, failing tests, and you know, still making big million dollar paydays. And uh, you know, guys like John Jones and probably Chael Sonnen and things like this. So he just basically said, "F it, I'm just gonna, you know." If I want to feel like throwing some, some F-bombs, I'll just throw an F-bomb, you know, and he's just being more of himself. And for some reason, it was almost like a whole new person. And uh, so if you guys can, I'm going to try to get the link and put it below. Um, and maybe you guys can listen to him. Uh, I just thought it was great. Even Ariel Hawani was getting a kick out of it. So that's kind of the reason for the backdrop today. I didn't want to just talk and have you guys stare at a wall. Um, I do have a TTM to open live today. I'm really stoked to have it. I did get a heads up. I was kind of sending tweets to uh, one of the guys I sent to and uh, asking if they got it. I did get um, uh, RTS. I knew I was going to get an RTS. I didn't reach out to this fighter before I sent it. I just took a shot with an old home address. I think actually no one gave it to me. And when I reached out to the fighter, he said he's already moved two times since then. This is from a 2009 card, uh, Topps card. So he's been retired for, I think, two or three years. And then today, this will be a topic for discussion. I did get some base from my old pal, Jamo. Uh, Walker Bow, 74, who used to be on, t on here a lot. But he just kind of turned over a leaf in his life and is not really into collecting anymore. So he hooked me up with some base that I was going to take down to Chicago tomorrow. And I just decide decided that I just don't need cards signed bad enough um, to make the trip worth it. I'm two, a little bit over two hours away 
And when I drew, when I was in down in Fort Smith, Arkansas, for tr- business, I made a trip over to Tulsa f- to do IP graphing, just just the same way I would do that tomorrow um, in Chicago. Um, but it was different. I didn't have, you know, it wasn't my expenses. I had a rental car, and it was I had nothing else to do that night. And it was just kind of different circumstances. It was the same distance as what Chicago is for me right now, but I just only guy I really need. And I have, and I mean, look, I have all my cards pulled here that I was going to take down with me. It looks like a lot, but it's p- pretty much like seven cards per fighter. And honestly, there's only maybe a sliver of these, maybe like this many, that would be new additions. They would all be just because I have them. So I've had these pulled. The only guy I really need is Gomi. And I'm hoping that I can get help with Gomi from other people that are down there. Uh, only guy I need is Taknori Gomi for my set card. So Jim Miller is going to be there and Henan Burrell. Now, I'm going to the event, and normally I would be there Friday for the weigh-ins. I would graph for like four or five hours after the weigh-ins at the fighter hotel. But this trip is not going to be that way because my son is playing at the Miller Park field. My nine, My nine-year-old son, Luke. So I'm not going to be there to graph or see the weigh-ins on Friday. So we're going down to the event Saturday around noon. And it's just really a bummer because I was looking forward to helping Nolan and my, and my pal Neil, who always hooked me up. So I just made the decision. It's not worth it. I mean, I was fully anticipating going. Um, I even had this. I'll check this out. This print came out pretty rad. Um, I even had this 11 by 14 ready for multi-autographs. This is actually the, the Chicago United Center Arena, back when it was Phil Davis and Rashad Evans. So I had this black and white all ready to go. I was going to get it all done up in blue Sharpie or maybe bronze. Um, my favorite metallic is bronze metallic from Sharpie. Uh, just the way it pops. Just for example, oh, I was going to show you. Chuck's in the way, but I have a display back there of... What I got done at UFC 164, the bronze just really pops. And I can't stop dropping you dudes when I do videos these days. I don't know which way is up. Uh, the Like this? No, nope. sorry. <laughs> Holy cats, I'm off all of a sudden. So here we go. Alright. So you're back on your pedestal. Um, you know what we're going to do? My next video, I'm gonna to try just to do a all um, pro wrestling pickups, but let's do the Mojo package today. We'll, we'll do the fight worn Mojo package today, but for now, um, let's do a live TTM break because I'll do the. So we'll get my new shinger out thanks to Stout seventy nine, Michael, what up? So we'll shing this thing. Um, this is a TTM coming back from overseas. It's always good to get. Um, I've wanted these two cards signed for a while. I tweeted a picture of the cards I wanted a few months ago, asking if I could send them where to send to, and all the fighter did was favorite the tweet. Um, this time, um, I know somebody who is fluent in J- Japanese, so I asked them to translate the contact info on Omigawa's website. And I got really close to this. I think my my fourth line was a little bit longer with, I forget. But I was pretty close to this, this format right there. I think this line I had a little bit, I think I had the uh, 1F at the end. But it came out real close. But either way, it came back in like, this is like two weeks or so. But I really hope these are good ink. Because these are really cool looking cards. So I did have one. I tweeted a picture of one wrapped up in a post-it saying this one's for you to keep. So let's take a look. This is freaking awesome. I'm so glad I got some nice ink on this. I need him for my moment of truth set. And I know somebody else probably does too. And I really wanted this 11 finest done. Really stoked to get solid black ink on these. Um really worked out well. I sent no return postage out to Japan. Um, they covered that and that was actually a, a giveaway on when I got it back. So yeah, there's the 
There's the postage that came back on there. I mean, you can't get that online. You can't buy that at the post office. You just have to send it. So there's the address. Once again, if you guys are set collectors or want something signed in Japanese, that's the Addy. But yeah, this is really, really nice. I'm happy with that. And what's coolest too is I have an extra to hook up somebody. So um, I know like Connor does this and um, Nolan. And I think other guys I know that do it have gotten him signed before in California at, during a fight. So that's the TTM. Um, I think uh, I showed the Alan Belcher live. What was it th this weekend? I don't think I had any mail on Saturday. I wasn't around to see it, and I just trust that I didn't have anything because nothing was put out. So let's get to the Mojo package. Um, I don't know what to say, but this is going to be a fight-worn package. There's no secrets to doing this. It's just people that, fighters that I'm in contact with. And in this case, this is a, a fighter I, I text with regularly. Um, it all started with me texting or uh, tweeting him a picture of the card I wanted to send TTM. And he was surprised that he even had a Topps card. And uh, let's see, what else can I say? And um, he said that Grudge Training Center was a place to mail. Um, so then we kind of struck up conversation through Twitter direct messages. And uh, we're both sincere believers in Christ. So we had that connection right away. So we just, we're personal contacts, I guess you could say at this point. We're not friends because we don't see each other in person. But definitely invited me out to see him and his family and to watch his next fight. And... Um, so what I did was I hooked him up with like six or seven, maybe even eight of his cards off eBay. He doesn't use eBay. I mean, dude's like over 30 but doesn't use eBay. It's kind of funny. But um, I sent him like six or seven, maybe even eight cards for him to keep as a gift. And he wanted to send me a shirt, which was totally cool. And um, I picked a purple shirt over a pink one. The pink was pretty dope. But purple is uh, my football north stars colors i took the purple and then uh, when i sent a return envelope for the for the wrap and the shirt uh, i sent this blue sharpie so he signed two of two blue sharpie these are both gonna be from a personal collection i'll use one for the shadow box and one for a collage so one is the numbered version base nothing special about it so it's not, it's not oh, maybe it's a little bit you can see the difference in the shading in the top maybe but, yeah, one's a little bit darker, I guess. So the base is lighter. So Josh Bear Copeland lost both of his fights. And after he got the stack of cards from me, he was just so thankful that he wanted to offer me something fight-worn. And I just totally told him he should keep it and this and that. And he was really adamant about offering it to me. So at first he offered me a signed-by poster. Um, but UFC Fight Night 57 was Paige Van Zant. UFC debut, so I figured that might be worth money for him. That was the Edgar Swanson fight card. So he, I just said, well, how about just a wrap then? Because he was really adamant about it. I told him to keep everything he had because his last fight, um, his sponsor, um, who actually runs the UFC shop, shop zone or whatever UFC's fight zone is or whatever their shopping center um the company that runs that actually took his shorts his wraps his gloves his banner and was going to give him money for it when they sold but it's not working out yet and uh hoping that he gets his stuff back at minimum he really and his shorts fight shorts he wants his stuff back he doesn't even really want the money the 500 bucks or whatever all that stuff could sell for um he was cut from the UFC after being finished by Jared Rosholt. Um, he actually fought in, what was it, Colorado. Two heavyweights fought, but really great talking to him. This is really a nice thing. And what's cool about this is this is his left hand, and this is from this fight. So it's UFC Fight Night uh, 57. And so the hand wrap that's in this glove... Um, right there... I got that hand wrap in there, so there's no trick or lies. It's just a con personal con connection I have with Josh, and he offered it to me because of you know being pals and all those um, cards I bought for him on on eBay and sent them out. So he's really.